Hello. Today, uh, there's some important news breaking in Ukraine. The Kerch Bridge across the Kerch Straits, which is the uh, one and only road and trail and train um, access way between Russia and Crimea, has been struck today in what appears to be a missile attack. Um, there are reports coming in over the last couple of hours of massive traffic jams. There is some uh, video footage uh, coming out which appears to indicate that some damage has been done to the Kerch Bridge on the car vehicle side of the bridge. The Kerch Bridge runs for about 20 kilometres um, from Russia across the Kerch Straits, which is the entrance way from the Black Sea into the Sea of Azov, which goes up to Azov at the top of that um, that sea, and the the bridge runs across to Kerch in Crimea. Now the bridge has two sides; it's two parallel spans that run. One is a um, dual carriageway car, vehicle, truck sort of thing or bridge to carry those vehicles, and the other is for trains, to allow trains to travel, which I believe is slightly elevated but running quite closely. Um, the bridge was destroyed or damaged. A section of it was damaged last October. Um, this was by recently admitted by the Ukrainians that they were involved in this, and it appears to have been a truck bomb that was used at that time. There is some video footage which seems to indicate that a large um, large lorry type truck um, with a large enclosed body um, may have been packed with explosives and what had led to the previous damage. Now, when that occurred, that uh, explosion was so large that it uh, destroyed one of the spans of the bridge and also um, was timed such that on the train bridge running parallel, a train was going past and the explosion caused fuel tanks on that train to explode. So there was damage done to both the train and the vehicle, the car vehicle sides of the bridge. Um, thus far, there hasn't been information to clarify exactly how much damage has been done today. It appears as though it may be just to the vehicle um, side of the uh, of the two two spans at this stage. There is some really quite horrible footage um, on social media, which is related to this. Which apparently, um, apparently, as the missile strike has occurred, the blast from that has caused vehicles to crash, and there is some quite yeah quite. Um, unsettling footage coming out at the moment and two fatalities have been reported um how if this is ukraine well this is assumed to be ukraine um given that it's the kerch bridge and it's russia's only land approach from russia to uh, to crimea russia does have access to crimea through the Ukrainian land that it has claimed through the special military offensive uh, operation, but it um, this is the only sort of naturally existing access into Crimea from Russia. There is some suggestions that the Ukrainians have recently repurposed some Soviet-era S-200 air defence missile systems and reprogram them to be ground attack. So that instead of being fired at a um, airborne target, a, a mi missile or a plane, they've been reprogrammed to be able to be fired to uh, uh, strike a ground target. Now, there's no confirmation of this. And if we look at the range, if you go from the Kerch Strait back in across Crimea and into Ukraine and into areas of Ukraine like Odessa or Kherson, where which would be some of the closest points for Ukrainian missile batteries to be located to reach the Kerch Bridge. Um, that distance is about 300 kilometres at its shortest. So it appears unlikely that it might be one of these repurposed S-200s as they have a range... Um, of around 300 kilometres, so they, they could they could do it. Um, but what may be more likely is that this has been a Storm Shadow or a French Scalp missile used in this. Um, th this will cause escalations from Russia. Uh, Russia has repeatedly said to the, um, the, the West, the Americans, the UK, um, the French, 
that they see the supply of long-range missiles to Ukraine as a threat to Russia if they're used on Russian territory. Now, if this is a Storm Shadow or Scout missile, then it has been used on what Russia considers to be Russian territory, the Kerch Bridge and Kerch Straits, the Russians claim as being Russian. Um, and um, the Russian Defence Minister, Sergei Shoigu, has previously commented, as has Dmitry um, Medvedev, that the use of British or French uh, long-range missiles being used on Russian soil and Russian targets will be considered um, as involvement by those nations in the conflict. Now, repeatedly, the US has announced that they have agreements with Ukraine that Ukraine would not use these weapons on Russian soil, that they would be used only within the areas of what was previously considered to be Ukraine um, prior to the special military operation. Um, however, just in the last day or so, um, the Ukrainian commander um, of the Fukam forces has come out and stated that he will... Um, he will take this conflict with or without support from the um, from the NATO nations, um, without being admitted to NATO, and that he will take this fight to Russia. And as said, I'm paraphrasing here, but who should tell us that we can't strike the Russians when the Russians are striking us? Now, while this is um, has will be great for morale in Ukraine, um, the, the the underlying the underlying threat here is that he will use these long-range missiles. Um, and the, sorry, this is Zeluzhny. I forgot to mention his name. Um, if, and if Zeluzhny, if, if Zeluzhny is going to do this, or if he has done this now, this is one of the cracks starting to show between Ukraine and NATO. Um because NATO don't want these missiles used on Russian targets because they feel it will be an escalation and they feel that there may be reprisals. On the other hand, this may be why a Storm Shadow or a Scalp has been used, if that is the case. Again, it hasn't been confirmed, but it is likely to be the case. Um, it may well have been done by Ukraine to try to draw an escalation out of Russia, perhaps enough such that NATO are drawn into the conflict. Um, as we have been able to determine from many sources, um, the West is struggling to provide Ukraine with the shells that it needs, the ammunition that it needs, and this conflict has thus far been an artillery-led conflict. So the, the, um, there are certainly reasons for why Zelensky and the Ukrainians may wish to attack the Kerch Bridge. Certainly there's reasons to do that, to interrupt Russian supply lines. But there may be reasons they would want to do that with a UK supplied Storm Shadow or a French Scalp to be able to then elicit a response from Putin and Russia, perhaps enough to draw NATO into the conflict with them. Anyhow, um, this is this is just an emerging topic at the moment. There'll be more news about this um, in the next day or so. Um, this will... So I'm sure this will seal the deal that the Black Sea grain deal will not be extended now after this has happened. Um, so I'll have more on that later on in the next day or so. Um, on another topic which you may be interested in, and let me just speculate here for a while. So um, Military Summary Channel on YouTube has... Um, does has for a long time done really good analysis on what's happening in the in the conflict in Ukraine. Every day he does a, a detailed review of the battlefront updates, um, calling out the exact locations where um, brigades um, are, are housed, where ammo dep depots might be, um, even where particular strikes occur on artillery or heavy equipment or where pushes are made to break through the lines. So it's really informative and has a lot of understanding and contacts. I believe he's based in Belarus, um, contacts with people in the area. And so I often find that his, um, his ideas on things have got some basis to them. So anyhow, what I'd like to talk about is there has been a lot of talk of recent that Russia is undertaking a purge of its military command. That after the, um, the insurrection led by Evgeny Prigozhin and the Wagner PMC, 
that it highlighted to Putin many of his commanders and generals who were disloyal to him. And what we have been seeing now with... Um, with the recent um, dismissal of some generals and commanders is that this is a purge underway and that this is, uh, is a symbol of um, weakness and shows a destabilization within the military and real problems for, for Putin. Now, that may be the case. That may well be the case. However, as I say, let me speculate on this topic here. Perhaps what we're seeing is something else. If you go back a couple of weeks and um, recall that the um, defense minister, Sergei Shoigu, backed up a comment that Putin had mentioned in a, um, in a meeting he had with some, with some war correspondents, where he was asked if a mobilization would be undertaken. And he said, at the moment, we don't need to have a mobilization. Now, Russia did a mobilization in September of last year. Um, but now they're not under active mobilization. And then Sergei Shoigu commented that in a report that he presented that at the present time, Russia is gaining somewhere around 10 to 12,000 volunteers per week into the armed forces. So without them running a mobilization, just through support of Putin, support of the special military operation, there are... 10,000 or more young Russians volunteering to join each week. So there was talk that the numbers that may have been involved in this would now be getting up to around 150,000. Um, so there may well be 150,000 volunteers, so eager, not, not people who have been conscripted, not people who have been dragged off the streets by military recruiting officers and forced into vans and forced under gunpoint to go out to the front lines. But people who volunteered, people who volunteered in a situation where the Russian military has time to train them, put them through months of training, that these commanders and generals, and there are a number of them. Um, the Colonel General Mikhail Tepelinsky, um, Popov, who, the, who was the commander of the 58th Army, who was just recently um, lost his position. Um, Mizintsev, uh, Selorostov, and perhaps most publicly, General Surovikin. So General Surovikin is... Um, serving as the commander-in-chief of the aerospace forces and Russian army general who has been heavily involved in leading the um, special military operation. Now, the last time he was seen publicly was in a video, um, a video broadcast that he made directly to Yevgeny Prigozhin during the insurrection, telling him to Prigozhin to, to knock it on the head, basically. Um, interestingly, in there he was sitting in a chair with a machine gun across his lap. But there's been great speculation that he hasn't been since, since, seen since, and that was because he's been purged by Putin. However, perhaps, and this is as Military Summary Channel suggests, perhaps what we're seeing here, because these, these commanders and generals are experienced, some of them have been very successful in their operation in the special military operation, so perhaps what we're seeing is not a purging, but instead is the formation of a new army. And that these experienced, wartime experienced generals and commanders are being relieved of their current posts to be moved across sideways to take command of a new Russian army. Now, there are varying estimates on the number of troops that the Russians have available to them now. Um, Simplicius the Thinker has done some analysis on this. And from memory, he was suggesting, this was a month ago, he was suggesting then that with the volunteer forces um, and with the mobilization that had been carried out in September, that the Russian forces at this stage could be getting upwards somewhere towards the 700,000 troop mark. So if there is that many, if there are enough coming through since, say, January, so the last six months, who are able to have been trained, had six months of training, perhaps had some rotation and involvement with the um, 
with the active frontline forces now to get them get them some experience then what we might see is that there is a new army being formed and that's where these generals and commanders are going um, another one point that military summary channel did mention too was how would you hide these army like this um, and he mentioned a a feature that happens that in russia there is a spring call up where they do make a spring call up and they pull in reservists and they pull in young young men wanting to get into the military and that that would um, provide the cover for the formation of a new army as the um, the western the western allies using their satellite technology would look would expect to see um, these numbers of men and troops forming in certain areas around Russia, but it's just that the numbers this year may be larger than normal. Anyhow, interesting topic. Um, bookmark that one and just come back to that one and check in in a month or two months' time and just see if we find out that Suravikin has not been imprisoned but has, in fact, ended up with the top job uh, leading the, or commanding a new army. All right, just a couple of things to finish off this brief update. Um, there are reports uh, that in Kharkov today that there were missile strikes on a train station and further that at least one of the trains was carrying NATO heavy equipment, um, possibly tanks, armoured vehicles and that sort of thing, and reportedly that those, train, those two trains were struck in the missile attack. Um, last one here. This is a topic I've gone on about a little bit, but I don't think it's going to go away. And this is that the real game changer in this conflict has been drones. Um, great example, a post I saw on Telegram today was showing footage of a FPV drone. FPV drone being the ones which are flown by a, a pilot who can sit back in a trench uh, kilometres away and fly that small drone, seeing what the drone can see from a camera mounted on the drone. And it was flying towards some soldiers in a running in a trench. And the comment was that simply this single drone could achieve what tens or hundreds of high explosive shells would struggle to achieve. So while we talk about the ammunition and shell shortage, which the West has at the present, which has been admitted to by Jake Sullivan, the advisor to the um, president, um, military advisor to the president, and by President Joe Biden himself has been admitted just this last week that um, Ukraine has a shell shortage and the US has a problem with, with uh, supplying them with more shells. And again, we've seen this now with the approval by Joe Biden to provide the cluster munitions to Ukraine as a stopgap to allow the Ukrainians to have some 155 millimeter shells to fire until they can find other ones. So while we have the artillery shortage, maybe the real concern and what we should be looking at here is who has a drone shortage. And on that point, there is a... Um, there is an interview that's been released today. Um, Alexander Zakharov, who was the developer of the Russian Lancet drone, he's given a tour of a factory where he claims he needs a Segway, one of those two-wheeled self-stabilizing vehicles, to travel around the factory. It's become so large. They've tripled the production on the number of Lancets. They have now... Uh, developed a new version. They've evolved into a new version, which is the is the Lie 53, um, and it has a new launcher, which will most likely make the launch setup and launch process quicker and faster. That was one of the drawbacks of the Lancet that it was timely to set up and launch. Uh, but perhaps more importantly, it now comes with new swarming capability. And this is being described as, while there may be a number of lancets airborne and loitering over an area, if one of them were to detect, say, a column or a group of, um, of armoured vehicles or tanks or just a group of targets, that lancet can then call to the other ones um, and they will then all effectively autonomously identify targets on the ground and so while one might locate them they may call in five or six others and suddenly all five or six of those targets will be under attack from the lancets um, and finally 
in, he, in the interview uh, where he stood in front of rows and rows and rows of lancets, he announced that uh, they have 200,000 of them ready to go. That's 200,000 of them. And they have 1 million of them in development. So this may be the real shortage to watch out for and look out, look for news articles that talk about the production of military drones because these, as I say, are the game changer and a shortage in this area might be a big difference in this conflict. All right, thank you very much. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please subscribe, post a like or share with your friends. I look forward to talking to, talking to you soon. Thank <laughs> you.